Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and this pen is the Runga Giant 9B, and it's gorgeous. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This package just arrived from the Runga Pen Company in India, and although I don't normally do pen reviews on this channel, I'm not really much of a pen collector, I think it's worth showing you the pens that make me happy, in the hope that they'll also make you happy. I bought this pen through a group buy on the Runga Facebook page. These pens are handmade to order in India, and Runga provides a long Google Documents form where you choose the acrylic type, the finish of the acrylic, the type of nib, the size of the nib, so that you can get exactly what you want. And the base price of this pen is 69 US dollars. My nib cost an extra $5, so the whole thing was under $80. And it took about two weeks to arrive. Anyway, there was an outer shipping package around this inner sewn-up cloth wrapping, which I think is a really charming way to receive a pen. Although I have to say, I don't really know how to open it. It's sewn up tightly at the end, and it's sewn up more loosely along the side, so maybe that's the easy way to get into it. I'll just open along here with a pair of scissors, and... No. That was just holding the cloth tight. There's no actual opening here. Okay, time to try the end. There we go, it's open. And inside the cloth wrapping, the box is wrapped in newspaper. So I'll just have to tear that off. And here inside, we have the red snakeskin pen box. I'm guessing it's not real snakeskin, but I have no idea. The name of the company is pressed into the top in gold leaf, and that looks nice. And inside, we have the pen, held down with the typical elastic strap. This is a large torpedo-shaped pen with no clip, and the chatoyancy is visible on two opposite sides of the pen, while the other two are so dark blue they are nearly black. The cap unscrews in about three quarters of a turn, which is just about perfect in my book and the threads are relatively fine with two starts, and they're smooth enough to be comfortable if your fingers rest on them. I chose a steel Bach nib, though you can choose between steel Yovo nibs, or titanium Bach nibs, or even Runga's own house nibs, which I've heard are made by Canwright. This nib is a double broad, which cost me an extra $5. It's nicely polished, it's very smooth without being glassy smooth, and there doesn't seem to be a baby's bottom on it, so that's good. This type of acrylic is called Sapphire C, and the body of the pen and the cap and the grip section are all made of the same material. When you screw on the cap, you can see here that the two pearlescent sides of the pen match up perfectly, or if you prefer, you can use the second start of the threads, and you can make them staggered, like so. Most of my favorite resin pens are inexpensive, and the cap and body will never match up perfectly when they're closed. This is a Pen BBS 323 in their Galaxy acrylic, which is awesome. I love this pen too, but you can see that the cap and body don't line up. And here's a Kaigaloo 316A with another beautiful acrylic, but again, the texture in the cap and body don't line up. Same thing on this Moonman M800, and I just got this Tianzi pen, and the acrylic is pretty similar to the Runga, but more green, and the cap and body don't line up. Now for size comparison, this is the Runga Giant 9B. It's seven inches long and three quarters of an inch in diameter. 
Here it is next to a Birmingham Pen Company 6th Avenue and a Narwhal Nautilus. And here it is next to an Opus 88 Omar and a standard sized Twisby Eco. So it's a big pen, yes. But once it's in your hand, it actually feels great. The grip section is normally sized, and the larger body is light enough that it just feels good and substantial. I think some of my metal pens are probably even heavier. I'm not going to waste a lot of time doing writing samples with the pen, since that depends on the type of nib that you get and the tuning of that specific nib. But as I've mentioned, this one happens to be wonderfully smooth, and the ink flow is good. About average, but a little on the wet side of average. Speaking of ink, this pen is a cartridge converter pen, but it could also be made into an eyedropper. The threads between the body and the section are fine and tight, and very long. It takes over 10 full turns to get the section off, which might be a little more than necessary. The converter that comes with it is a Schmidt, which is a standard international. Oh, and I should mention that the cap does post, but not deeply, and of course it would make the pen very unwieldy. This pen is handmade, and it does show in a couple of places. The polish around the edge of the cap has some imperfections, and the taper at the end of the body has a little bit of waviness that I can't see, but I can feel. Some people might consider these things drawbacks, but I like the fact that I can tell that this is a handcrafted pen, so that's fine with me. And at this price, I'd happily buy another one. Or two. And that's it for today. If you haven't already subscribed and liked this video, this is a good time to do it. Enjoy your pens and inks out there, everyone, and don't forget to actually use them.